Alright, so after trying a couple of times with that, uh, here's the dual circuit electronic touch here. You can see that I'm touching, nothing's happening, but if I put my finger on the power and you try it again, there you go. And that, I decided to go for a CW Arduino gear. The goal is to make this thing here. So what it's supposed to do is get dots when you hold on one side, like that, and dashes when you hold on the other. Right, and when you hold both of them down, so if you go left first, then right, then you get... Right, and if you go the other way, you get a dash first, and then the alternate. Right, and now to make this thing. Alright, so the first thing you need to know about Arduino code is how it's structured. Uh, we have files like these called uh, sketches, and they're basically a piece of code that you would run. Uh, specific to the Arduino, there's a setup function right here, which will be run once when the Arduino is powered up. And then after that, the Arduino will execute commands in this loop function here, over and over and over and over and over again, until you either uh, power it down or hit the reset switch or something like that. Uh, so once again, it goes through here once, and then it goes down there to the bottom, it comes back up here, and it'll keep on going. So what I've done here is basically, uh, at the beginning of every loop, I read uh, whether the pins are pulled high or low with the digital read function. And these actually, internally, I set them to have a pull-up resistor. So whenever this touches ground, uh, the pin will go low. And that value gets stored into these two variables here. And now I check uh, three cases basically. This first case is where they are both pressed, the second is where the dit is pressed only, and the third one is where the da is pressed. And we can take a look at how this code actually functions on the hardware. Alright, so here we are back at the breadboard. I've just plugged these two wires into empty rows right here. So let's start with the white wire. I don't know what this is, but yep, that's the da. So you can see when I touch it, it'll start doing the uh, dashes for you. And when I touch the other one, it'll give you the dits. And when I touch both of them, well, if I can get it, there we go, it's uh, alternating. And the sound is coming from this buzzer right there. The only issue is when you try to switch between them, so if you want to do like a... It's a little bit hard to get the dots uh, on time because this loop here only checks for uh, whenever you're done playing one character, one element, then it checks again whether you did something else. Um, the issue is, we have a tendency to hit the dots way before the last uh, element is sent. So I want to actually account for that. One way to do it is use the hardware interrupts right there. So uh, those are in special pins, and what interrupts do is basically, whenever it receives like an event, whether it's a, like a rising edge or a falling edge on the Arduino, then we want to stop whatever the processor is doing, do something else real quick, and then come back to performing the rest of our function. However, uh, we're not going to do that because we're going to move straight into this thing. Here's the other part of the hardware. I've got uh, two resistors here attached to a couple of pins, and I've got two more leads coming out here. Uh, by the way, these are 470K, and this leads over to an AC jack. Now, I thought this would make a pretty good uh, CW keyer, especially since it's recycled, uh, whatever electronics was attached to there before has been dead. So, I just stole this off of there, and we even get this, like, coiling uh, wire thing, so you can make a nice portable keyer, and you can, like, pull it out whenever you need, and it'll collapse nicely into this form. So, let's take a look at how this is now implemented in the code. On the Arduino website, you can find a library called the Capacitive Sensing Library, uh, and you can download it for free right there, and when you scroll down, uh, you can see how it works. You basically connect uh, two ends of these uh, into two different pins on the Arduino, and you attach a little piece of metal on one side and a resistor going across. You know, that's kind of what I have going on here. Uh, and then you're able to sense uh, someone's touch. If you want to know how it works, then just go ahead and read this section. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is down here, uh, the higher your resistance is, the further away you can sense something, so 12 to 24 inches away for 40 megohm. 
And what am I going for absolute touch to activate? Now I have 470Ks because that's just what I pulled out of the junk box. And it works just fine. So now let's take a look at how the code changed. Oh yeah, but first I want to point out that there's actually an example sketch uh, where someone has put together basically everything you need to know about how this thing runs. So you can copy and paste sections of this uh, into your own code, which is what I've done, and then you can get this to work. And now I've made a new function called read capacitance dit. That just replaced the two lines that were here. By the way, these uh, two slashes means that the computer will not read these two lines. These are now comments for the reader. Uh, so I've replaced the digital read where I'm reading the red and white wires being grounded and I've replaced it with these two functions. And these two functions, if you scroll down, uh, actually reads the capacitance value, which, you know, looks pretty much similar to that example over there, except I'm checking it against the value 5, or 500. So what is this value 500? Well, you can see over here, uh, right now I have the Arduino reading out the uh, arbitrary values of the capacitance sensed on these two terminals. And, you know, when I put my hand closer to it, you can see that they jump, right? And when I touch one of the paddles, you can see it jumps right up to like a thousand and something. Uh, same for the other one. So I can very easily check if my finger is touching it by uh, checking if these arbitrary units are greater than a set number. In this case, that is the 500 I've chosen here. For now, this is actually a almost functional piece of code you can use for your transmitter. All you have to do is put an extra maybe line or two out there with transistors and that will key your uh, rig. Alright, so I tossed most of the old code and I just rewrote most of the, the stuff on top. But here, one, one thing is that the 600 here, the check, this is kind of like a threshold for uh, the dot and the dash. So we change those two numbers, your uh, sensitivity or threshold for what counts as a touch or tap will change. And also, you can calibrate this uh, touch level by just holding on to something like that so that your hand capacitance is like calculated in it, and then you hit reset. And then if I have my foot, my bare foot on the ground, it actually changes the results. So, uh, yeah, definitely play around with that value until you get it right. All right, and here's a quick demo of everything it should do. Starting with the dots, and then we go to the dashes, and then we do the alternating in the other way, the insertion, uh, so I thought about it some more and it turns out that you can actually hook up a transistor at the base of an NPN transistor to pin 13, because that's actually what's connected to the LED also, uh, connected the uh, emitter to ground and connect the uh, collector over to your keying line and that should be that really uh, so yeah that's it for this project